From the heart of the jungle comes a savage cry of victory. This is Tarzan, Lord of the Jungle. From the black core of dark Africa, land of enchantment, mystery, and violence, comes one of the most colorful figures of all time, transcribed from the immortal pen of Edgar Rice Burroughs, Tarzan, the bronzed white son of the jungle. And now in the very words of Mr. Burroughs, the story of Headhunters of Yambisi. Some parts of Africa have changed little since the days when the first white men crossed the dark continent. And those changes that have occurred may be traced to the patient missionaries, the determined colonists, the intrepid pioneers who have long battled against the aboriginal cruelties of the wild people who inhabit a wild land. But laws passed in foreign countries and relayed to colonial administrators will never alter the nature of the Congo. Instead, these laws often cause resentment and stimulate fresh outbreaks of terror. The enactment of a recent law had brought Tarzan to Saint-Dizier to speak to Jean Aubert, Governor General. But why should anyone want to tear down the curtain barriers which mark the forbidden trails? Well, those who enact the law do not realize that these trails forbidden to white men, they are merely small paths used for native ceremonial. They cannot understand that these trails lead only to sacred places of no importance to civilized men. But if they knew that these barriers saved the lives of those inexperienced in the jungle, surely they would... Now, someone mentioned these forbidden trails in a report, and it stirred up a controversy in the Chamber of Deputies. And one fat politician spoke of restraint of trade. Another said the natives are attempting to halt colonial expansion. Can't they realize that it's dangerous to stir up the natives? Well, to them, thousands of miles away... The stories of native voodoo, of savagery, of idol worship, barbarism, they are mere exaggerations to make our task here seem more important. If those who pass your laws could only witness some of the native practices that flourish in the Congo. No, I doubt they would believe their own eyes. Even now, in an anteroom, there sits a gentleman who has asked me to stage some native ceremonies for him. To stage them? He's an American magazine photographer. He's learned of Africa... Through the cinema. (laughs) He has come here to do a feature article on the modern Africa. And when he completes his task, the world will believe our citizens are as easily controlled as students in a classroom. You mean he's already made up his mind what he will find in the jungle? He's a brash, red-haired idiot. Has already confided to me the title of his article and the accompanying pictures. The heading is to read, Africa Debunked. But such a view of our country will only bring fresh misunderstandings, new laws to infuriate the natives. Can't you forbid him to enter the jungle? My instructions are to accord him every courtesy. I cannot disregard these orders. Then permit me to be his guide. I promise you that he will not find my Africa a land of gentle people who can be ruled by a shelf full of law books. Hello. You are hereby appointed his official guide, doesn't You have my permission to make his red hair turn white. But I shall hold you responsible for his life. Monsieur Tarzan, Monsieur Red Hail. First time you ever saw Red Hail, huh? (laughs) Usually it's white. (laughs) I'm happy to see you have a sense of humor, Mr. Hail. You're apt to need it before you return to saint (laughs) Dizier. Well, I'm game. Nothing surprises me. Not even that leopard skin you're wearing. (laughs) Hey, where'd you get it? From the good old USA by mail order? This is the skin of a leopard who was about to rend a native child limb from limb. It was fortunate that I was able to jump between them. And you killed the leopard with your bare hands, huh? Monsieur Tarzan's feats of bravery and strength are legend in our country. (laughs) I gotta hand it to you guys. You're a real showman. Oh, gosh, if you could stage a battle with a leopard for me, I could get a series of pictures that would sell a million copies of the magazine I work for. Well, then you are willing to accept me as a guide? Uh, Sure, sure, why not? You and I will take a jaunt through the jungle and bring back enough material to go into business for ourselves. I'm afraid you and I will need assistance on our jaunt. I can travel unaided through the jungle, but those unused to jungle ways must have bearers, porters, personal boys, a scary... Well, I'm on an expense account. Let's shoot the works. I, uh... I took the liberty of lining up a manyapara, a headman. He is waiting outside. Yeah, all right. Trot him out. Hope he has a ring through his nose. <laughs> My great cop. 
Mickey? Mickey? Mickey. That's the name of the savage man, uh, whatever he called? It is a simplified version of his native name. Yeah. One is adopted for use when he serves as a headman for safaris. Uhalagane. Nahale Najima. Pujambo, Mickey. Sejambo. <laughs> a native headman dressed in an army shirt and an overseas cap. <laughs> a little out of character, ain't he? Mr. Red Hale, this is Monaki Mickey, whom you may call Mickey. He is to be your head man. I'm glad to meet you. Um, wear Ketchum white men's clothes. I secured the uniform as part of the regular equipment issued to student engineers sent from Africa to Europe a few years ago. I was best in my class. <laughs> ah, there, now, you see what I mean? <laughs> All of this talk about savage Africa. And my head man talks like a college instructor. <laughs> uh, what made you come back out here, uh, Professor Mickey? I returned, Mr. Hale, because I could not accustom myself to the ways of so-called civilized people. Hmm. Inside, I'm still what you call a savage. Oh, now, see here. I hope I'm able to restrain my savagery in dealing with you, Mr. Red Hale. But perhaps temptation may prove too great. In just a moment, we will learn what adventures befall Mickey, Red Hale, and Tarzan when they plunge into the jungle. Set among the native huts, the sun-whitened governmental buildings, the colorful native bazaars, and the exotic shops of Lagos is a modern building which bears the sign Safari Equipment Corporation Limited. And it was to this modern structure that Tarzan brought the skeptical Mr. Red Hale. Now, don't tell me. I know it. It just looks modern. Inside, I'll find a clerk with a bone through his nose and wearing a breech cloth made out of a gorilla skin. Oh, on the contrary, you'll find Mr. Bridges well-dressed and extremely civilized. Yeah. He may be the last civilized man you see for a long time. Ah, good afternoon, Tarzan. Good afternoon, sir. Mr. Bridges, Mr. Hale. Very happy to know you, sir. Going to have a go at the jungle, eh? Uh, yes, yes. I'm going to brave the jungle wilds where no white man has ever trod. <laughs> Sounds like a travelogue, doesn't it? Yes, precisely. We will require a green linen tent for Mr. Hale's use. Right, oh, one green linen tent. We carry only the finest, sir. Lined in red is an added protection against the sun. Some colors are more heat-resistant than others, you know. Well, the color of my hair ought to be some protection. We shall need Uganda water bottles, airtight tin boxes, a portable washstand, and the other usual camping equipment. Right, huh? In addition, you'd best measure Mr. Hale for mosquito boots and suitable clothing. Oh, we'll fix them up first rate. Hey, uh, hey what's that up there? Why, that's a hammock chair, sir. Oh, one of those things they carry you in, huh? That's right, sir. Two porters carry the chair suspended between them. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, when you make up the order, throw in one of those. Uh, Mr. Hale, they are meant for invalids or women. Or for guys who don't like walking, huh? But it will be almost impossible for porters to carry such a chair on the paths we will follow. I said we're taking the chair. All right. But I think that before our return, you will find that this is the most dangerous decision you've ever made. Yeah, how do you figure that? I think from now on, I'll let experience be your teacher. Lessons so learned are best remembered. If the pupil lives. Porters and barrows are already complaining, Tarzan. I know. It's most difficult to carry Mr. Hale in his hammock chair. I don't know what we can do about it yet. Yeah, their complaints are only partly caused by the weight of the chair and the heavy photographic equipment he insists on carrying within it. Even though many of them understand not a word of English, they sense his scorn, his contempt of them. I know. But he doesn't realize what their friendship may mean to him. He still thinks our jungle is a stage setting. But during the past few days, dozens of ferocious animals have come within a few feet of him. His eyes might well be those of a newborn baby who's not yet learned to use them. He's seen neither the animals nor the unfriendly tribesmen who have peered at him from behind every bush. Hey, are you two going to gab all day or are you going to dig me up something to get some decent pictures out? Tarzan, there's only one thing to do. 
scare him so badly his ideas and his manners will change. Oh, that's exactly what I have in mind. Even if I have to assist nature. Uh, hey, 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 I heard that. I'm wise to your game. Now, let me tell you this. There isn't anything you can roll out that'll scare me. I don't scare easy. I'm sure you're very brave, Mr. Hill. Uh, hey, you guys, hey, just keep this chair moving along. When I want to slow up, I'll tell you. Perhaps it would be good to let the Wampagazee rest here, Tarzan. No, Mickey, the porters must go on for now. I've caught the scent of an elephant herd, and at this time of the year, they... Elephants, eh? Well, let's head for them. Might be able to get some good pictures for a change. The season is a dry one. If they hunt for water, they might be... You heard me. I'm footing the bills for this safari. Now get going. With many misgivings, Tarzan ordered the safari in the direction from which he had caught the scent of Tantor, the elephant. Now the jungle path wound through a tangled bamboo forest and then emerged into a small, peaceful-looking clearing. But as the safari crossed the small open space, the elephant herd crashed through the dense undergrowth on the opposite side. The native bearers, in sudden panic, dropped the hammock chair containing Mr. Hale and fled. Tarzan grasped a vine and swung into a tree. Now, with unerring accuracy, the jungle lord dropped on the head of the lead elephant, kicked it savagely on the side of its head, causing it to swerve an instant before the hammock chair would have been tinder beneath the mighty hoofs. Following their leader, the rest of the herd also swerved. Tarzan grasped the limb of an overhanging bough and pulled himself up into a tree as the elephant herd thundered away. Well, Mr. Hale, are you satisfied now that Tarzan and I have not been lying to you about the dangers of the jungle? Oh, gosh, did I get some wonderful shots of that stampede. They're worth their weight and go. Are you all right, Mr. Hale? Eh? Huh? <laughs> sure, sure, I'm all right, Tarzan. I told you I don't scare even. Unfounded courage is often stupidity. You're like a baby ape who attempts to attack a panther. <laughs> yeah, maybe so. Except that I've never seen an ape with red hair. <laughs> well, tell the boys to come out from behind those trees. I'd like to reach our camping place early tonight so I can try to develop a couple of these pictures. Well, what's holding things up? The porters and bearers have deserted us, Mr. Hale. But, but what? Even before you needlessly endangered their life by insisting on crossing a path of an elephant herd, they spoke among themselves of refusing to serve you further. Did you know about this, Tarzan? I did not know they'd run off taking all our food and equipment, but I was aware they might desert. Well, when, why didn't you do something about it? I permitted experience to give its first lesson. And now, if you can tear yourself from that chair, we shall walk from here. Uh, okay, okay. Although you may not realize that the chair you insisted on buying might have been the cause of your death. Had you been walking, you could have leaped for the protection of the trees, as the natives did. Then I wouldn't have gotten my pictures. Oh, uh, here, Mickey, you carry the camera. Treat it tenderly now. Tarzan, you carry the knapsack with my darkroom supplies. And what will you carry? Myself. Uh, hey... Aren't those our boys hiding in the bushes over there? Oh, your eyesight is improving. A few days ago, you would not have known anyone watched us from the edge of the clearing. Hey! Hey, you guys! If you think for one minute that I'm going to stay... They are not our boys, Mr. Hale. Huh? They're members of the Ambezi tribe. This is their land. Okay, we'll put a few of them on the payroll then. And I won't have to leave my chair behind. I'm afraid it would be unwise to hire Yambezi natives, even if they're willing. In the name of heaven, why not? They are cannibals and headhunters. Oh, no. You're not going to try to feed me that junk again. Hey! Hey, you! What did he say? He's their chief, and he says he's approaching you and brings his men. No. Jumbo, Buona. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, hello yourself. I'm glad to meet you. Hey, lay off, will you? All right, quit mauling me. Hey, leave my hair alone. Do not touch the white man. Why did they do that? They've never seen red hair before. Uh, Perhaps they think it would make a nice trophy. Oh, so that's the angle now, huh? Mickey and you have cooked up this yarn about headhunters just to scare me. Oh, honestly, why this don't This is you... not something Mickey and I have cooked up. These men are the fiercest savages of the entire jungle. Oh, good, good. Hey, what does the chief mean by these motions he's making? In sign language, he's inviting us to their village so that we may share their evening meal. Well, that's lucky with all our food. No, there. no, no, I, I can hunt for food. It's not wise to enter their village. For the last time, I'm tired of this game you're playing. I'm going to their village. You coming? Yes, if you insist. Mickey and I shall accompany you. Ah, in the Nekule. Apaka. 
Hey, now what? They will return by that path over there. We are to reach their village by the elephant trail that skirts the small mountain just east of here. They're going to cut through there, and we have to go all the way around that mountain? Well, why? They were on the trail taking part in a ceremony when our encounter with the elephants disturbed them. The trail is for ceremonial purposes only, and none but members of the Ambizi may walk upon it. Oh, it's one of those trails they just passed that new law about then, huh? Yes, and it is taboo for strangers to go beyond that curtain of dried palm fiber. <laughs> you mean those old dried leaves are supposed to keep us out? No, we're to be kept out by our knowledge that those who break the taboo are apt to meet sudden death. Well, now, in the first place, I know all about that new law. It makes these forbidden trails open to everybody. In the second place, I'm not taking a long way when there's a short one. And in the third place, I'm fed to the teeth with all this, this hocus-pocus. I'm taking that forbidden trail. It is not wise. I'll get along all right. I've got a head on my shoulders. Yes, but it may not rest there long. <laughs> In just a moment, we shall learn the fate of Red, Mickey, and Tarzan in the village of the headhunters of Yambisi. Well, Tarzan, I guess our friend Mr. Hale has reached the village of the Yambisi by now. Yes, the forbidden trail he insisted on taking must be hours shorter than this path. Perhaps he never reached the village. Perhaps they killed him the moment they discovered he'd broken their taboo. No. Had I thought his life was in immediate danger, I would not have left him. The governor general is holding me responsible for his life, after all. Well, then you're counting on the MBC to spend more time celebrating before they kill him, huh? It is the way of all tribes, is it not, Mickey? Yes, but when his time comes, how will you save him? I may not. But your promise to the governor general, you said Mickey, that... more sacred than anything is my love of the jungle and its people. Even these savage Yambizi who merely follow the teachings of their fathers. And if Red Hale continues to scoff, if he uh, writes an article that will cause more ridiculous laws to be passed, the jungle people will suffer? Is that what you mean? Exactly. Until Mr. Hale shows fear, until he has learned to respect the ways of the jungle, I cannot help him. I believe there's more savagery left in you than there is in me. Perhaps. Come, Mickey. We're reaching the edge of the village, eh? How about us? Do you think the MBC will want to take our lives as well as his? I don't know. But we must be on guard every moment. Look, Tarzan. Hale. All alone, unguarded. They're watching him. See how they stand about in small groups? They've certainly given him the best hut in the village. And look, they've decorated him with necklaces and bracelets. Maybe we're wrong, Tarzan. Hi there. Hi. <laughs> Come on over. The grub's swell. And look, don't tell me what I'm eating. I don't want to know. So you, you have made friends quickly. <laughs> yeah, I told you I'd get by. The Forbidden Trail, they didn't attempt to stop you? No, they were just bringing some young girls back to the village. Seems they'd had some sort of a tribal rite that made it okay for these girls to take husbands. You interrupted the bride ritual? Oh, interrupted nothing. They were tickled to death. <laughs> I took pictures of all the girls, the chief, and a guy who calls himself the grand something or other. And when I got back here, I developed the pictures. Now they think I'm some sort of a witch doctor. Just give me another week here, and I can run for vice president. I see. <laughs> all this talk about headhunters and cannibals. <laughs> you know, you had me half believing I'd find one of these, those iron kettles in the middle of the village with a missionary stuck in the center of it. The Yambisi do not cook their meat. Oh, well, whatever I'm eating here is cooked, and it's darn good. Hey, hey, pals, bring some of the stuff over for my uh, my friends here, huh? You need one up. Hey, wait a minute, where's the other guy? You know, one of them talks a little English. Oh, oh, there, there he is over there, see? The witch doctor, mm -hmm. and he's wearing his sacrificial dress. Yeah, <laughs> like a kid in Halloween, painting his face white, wearing all that funny junk. Do you know what that junk is he wears about his waist? Some of those voodoo dolls I've read about, I guess. They are human heads. Human heads. <laughs> are you kidding? They're no bigger than my fist. The Yambisi are clever in shrinking heads without altering a single feature. And despite his apparent friendship, I believe the witch doctor plans on adding another doll to his collection. One with red hair. <laughs> Well, 
Well, Mickey, despite the witch doctor's sacrificial costume and the ceremonial dress of the entire tribe, they haven't given any indication at all of meaning harm to him. Yeah, he's smarter than we've given him credit for. It's been the pictures. They've never seen anything like it before. That's right. And they're doing exactly what he says. They're staging their ceremony so he can use his magic box. Yeah, as long as he gives them prints to fasten on their totem poles, they're happy. Hey, hey, did you see that? Native jugglers using children instead of Indian clubs. Oh, boy, won't that make a shot. Hey, and those knives. When they throw the kids, they only miss the knives by inches. It's a native practice that even we, who are used to the jungle ways, have been trying to stamp out. Many children have been killed in this dance. Oh, go on. The kids aren't even scared. They're hypnotized. They are? Boy, will that make a magazine spread? Yeah. Nice going there, Yambezi. And now, uh, now trot out the next act, eh? Now the snake charmer is to perform for you. Huh? It's developing into a three-ring circus. And hey, what are those guys doing? Passing needles and hooks and pins into their bodies? Yeah? Hey, hey, Mickey, hand me that pouch with my flash bulbs in them. Oh, boy, this is great. They are holy men who torture their bodies in the belief they will earn absolutions from all their sins and be rewarded with eternal happiness. Well, I'll reward them with some candid camera shots of the rack. Hey, uh, hand me that small box with my light meter in it, will you? Hurry. Yes. There you are. Yeah, that's it. Now... Now the knife dances begin. Yeah, with all this material around, I need six cameras and a dozen hands. I'll hold that bag with the spare foam in it. No, no, I'll just toss it in this stone away. No, no, Mr. Hale. No, that's their sacred rock. It's just a brown stone to that me. That stone is granite. It is brown from bloodstains. <laughs> well, it's well dried in. It won't hurt the film any. Man with red hair. You defile sacred rock. Oh, come on now, come on. Let's keep the show going. Much we let you do. Walk forbidden trail. Sea maidens at bridal rite entered tribal circle is enough. Now you defile sacred stone. Oh, wait, wait, take it easy now. I'll develop these pictures in the morning and you'll have... Answer! A... Answer! Well, Mr. Hale, I think you've finally done it. Huh? Uh, done what? you finally persuaded them to prove to you the savagery of the jungle. Now you're... You're still trying to scare me, aren't you? Uh, what? Why did they quit the racks? They're preparing a new one now. They sing about it. Well, what are they singing about? Native tribes make up their songs as they go along. This one tells how a Matuhodari, a clever man, came to their village and made them small and flat. That's how they describe the pictures you've taken. Yeah? It tells of how they fed you and permitted you to do what no one outside of the tribe has ever been permitted to do. Tarzan, the knife man is sharpening his execution blade. Mickey, they're all busy. I, I want you to slip from the village and start back toward Sandy's Yay. No. We will try to meet you on the trail. No, I'll stay as long no, as... No, go, go. I, I can travel more quickly than you, even if I'm to carry Mr. Hale. Leave, now. Well, all right. I wish you well, Tarzan. I, I, I'm still not falling for this racket, the, the knife man. You, you, you've arranged all this with the Yambisi. The, the, what, are they, what are they saying in that song now? That none, not even the members of their tribe... Not even their own chief may place anything except the human head on the sacred rock. Tarzan. Tarzan, they're, look, they're coming this way. The, the one with the green painted face does have a knife. It's as sharp as a surgeon's scalpel. I will stand by your side until the end. Well, look, look, they're not kidding. They're, they're walking slowly, but they mean business. They do indeed. Yeah. Yeah, they're, that's too late. We, we can't escape. Perhaps not. Tarzan, Tarzan, do something. Help me. Save me. Tarzan. I've never been so scared in my life. Traveling over your shoulder through the tops of the trees was almost more frightening than those headhunters. But this fright will pass. Had the men of Yambezi advanced a step closer, you would not have recovered. Yeah, I... I know that now. It wasn't until they were inches from me that I suddenly realized the difference between what I've seen in the movies and the real thing. Oh, brother, I... I know now. I've seen enough of the jungle towers. Good. I will take you back to Saint Isier, Mr. Hale. And when you write your article and publish those pictures you did not drop in your fright, you will tell the world that Africa is still Africa. And civilized men must understand and fear her ways. We'll 
return in just a moment to tell you about our next story of Tarzan. A sudden scream in the jungle night brings Tarzan to the rescue of a beautiful golden-haired woman who has wandered alone into the most dangerous part of the Congo. And through her, Tarzan meets the most ruthless man Africa has ever known. A man with a driving urge to kill every type of animal alive, including man. Tarzan becomes the quarry of a savage manhunt in Trophy Room. Tarzan, the transcribed creation of the famous Edgar Rice Burroughs, is produced by Walter White, Jr., prepared for radio by Bud Lesser, with original music by Albert Glasser. This is a Commodore production. Commodore production.